Good evening, I am Tiro, and let's play The Adams Family. Last time we left off, we were going for the final heart in the conservatory. And hopefully this time I won't be drowned by the little bleeps of these stupid flies. And here we come to our first hidden area in the pot. Just duck down like you do a pipe in Mario. And the conservatory is what I would consider the worst area for several reasons. First, there are a lot of one-way doors, so what's normally a three-branch path now becomes a giant maze. And two, as demonstrated by me a little bit a, a couple of seconds ago, there are a lot of required monster jumps that you only have one or two uh, turns to get at. So if you don't get it, you're screwed, just as I was to walk over those platforms. And three, just... I won't say necessarily bad design, but there are a lot of hazards that occur. And here's an example of a different mechanic, uh, reappearing blocks. And the hazards are a lot of thorns. You have a lot of, the, of those spiked enemies underneath me walking around. You have the exploding tomato bombs. And you have tons of flies. You have these flies, you have little tomato flies that are coming in patterns. And you have cramped areas like here, which involve jumping and also, in one instance later, uh, a very, you know, maze-like room. I mean, it's one way, but, you know, you have cramped areas like here, just one-way tunnels. Now, I hit the switch, which will remove the walls that are covering the door here, and this will take us to the Thorn Pass. And right at the big start, we want to get to that door, but we only have one chance with this fly. If we mess up, we're screwed. Now, I was able to get it because I've been practicing a lot. But imagine doing it as a kid with, you know, the slick controls and huge aggravations. And, you know, only five lives. You know, this is before I kind of sat down and did uh, uh, one up harvesting with a little technique which I'm going to show you after I get the, uh, the first family member. And so, here, more reappearing blocks. Kind of nice of them, considering you know, they have a bomb and the spiky dude. Come on. Hit the switch, go around, and of course, the bombs respond. That would have removed a block wall that was here. Avoid the spiders. Hit the switch to remove another block. Would have been right here. And I just died, but that's okay because... Yeah, that's where the halfway mark was. Jump, jump. A lot of spikes. Oh, I cleared that. Every time I played, I always missed that one jump. Here's another halfway mark with the first rope puzzle. Well, not puzzle, but I guess course, and you know, obstacles. I don't see why people call, you know, something that's challenging a puzzle is maneuvers. Trick here is to realize you can kind of hang halfway off the rope, but I went all the way through because joysticks are never as good as the actual gamepad. And here I am with centipedes, and I'm just gonna commit suicide because I want four hearts. The centipedes are pretty easy, just hang in the corner over here and just jump on them. Any part of the body is fine except the head, but you actually want to jump on them. If you, uh, for example, you know, headbutt them from underneath, you'll get hit. If you do a monster jump, you'll hit the thorns that are right above me. So it's kind of tricky. I don't know how anyone would play or actually do this boss. If you can see, it takes up a lot of the room. Unless you hide in this corner, you're probably dead. I'm just waiting for that last hit. Here we go. And the final heart. Yay. And this boss is kind of unique because it sets you right in the middle of a room. And there's really no quick way back. Unless you count some of the one-way mechanic that will be at the end of this monster garden. And here just a example of a crowded room that's very common in the conservatory. You know, nowhere to jump. You have tons of those tomato plants. 
You have bombs, which keep respawning if you move to dodge. Yeah, these spiders, these little alien monsters, which are kind of okay, but you know, too many projectiles. They kind of throw you a heart once in a while, but it's not worth it. Not when you have a hundred lives and five hearts. Just better go kamikaze. Oh, and I'm doing a lot better for time than my previous runs. Now, if you notice the little, like, green alien monster character, you'll see him kind of recurring in other levels of the game. I believe in the graveyard, he looks like a werewolf. And if you notice in the brief time we were in the kitchen, the walking goldfish bowl had the same feet. So not only does this game recycle its monsters, but it kind of recycles its sprites. Now here's a little, like, optional area that took me forever to figure out. And I switch. Because I kept trying to get up through here by jumping on the plant, jumping on the fireballs of the plant to kind of get up there, but no, I just had to break these blocks. So I'm an idiot. Let's see if I can monster jump on top. Nope. If I walked over there, came up with the one extra block, which I can't make this jump now. Nope. Okay, let's try it again. Yes. These blocks can disappear. Get over here. Duck. Hit the switch. Kind of neat that it came up underneath me. Hit that block. Jump around. Hit this little thing. And I believe... Let's see... I have no idea how to get across, but I don't care because I don't need the one-ups. Now, normally when you get, go through the conservatory, you can get to the monster garden, but when you come, the wall is blocked like that. And so there's no way to go up to the uh, top and get to the centipede. So this is a one-way room via mechanics. And here we're back at the Thorn Pass, which is where we did to get to the Wormy Way. Now, I'm going to save stay here just to show you an example of the one ways. Okay, here's the Monster Garden. That wall is blocked. There's no switch along the way. Oh, and they taunt you with that switch right there. Yeah. Now, if we go down here, save. It takes us to the Long Garden, which we can then proceed to the graveyard. But if we go back... It takes us to Poison Ivy, which is uh, on the route if we were just to have gone straight through the conservatory and not take that detour with the monster jump hitting switch in the first door. So yeah. Like that. And I'm gonna skip some time. So I know I'm probably not gonna make it back to the hallway, but I'm gonna see if I can get make it back to the place in the Thorn Pass we where we detoured. Might not be able to, because this jump is really hard and maybe not possible. Okay. Let's see. Maybe if I take the bug with me. Well, I have to, but... It's keeping the bug as well. Yep, I need the bug. Come over here. There we go. There's a little secret there, if they, the blocks were gone, I would have fallen down to, I think, the money chute and fallen up there. Or maybe I'd fall through this hole. Yep. Money funnel. If you notice, there's a hole in that ceiling. So I'm thinking the hole is from over here. And I run all the way through. Or I should say backwards. You can see why they call it a thorn pass, because of all the slopes, kind of like thorns, but they don't kill you. Almost for time. And here's a nice little area to give you a heart attack. You think you're supposed to float all the way with these bugs, but no, you just walk through. Piece of cake. I think there's a secret there. Yep. Secret for the switch, which would have worked if I were going to the right. But since I'm backtracking, it's pretty useless. Oh no, wait. Yeah, the switches are switches help for the jumping, as you can see here. Oh, would have helped cutting up here. So I'm a complete idiot. 
Oh well, I'm Tiro, and have fun gaming. See ya.